Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to put a wireless remote on any 12 volt source and in particular it's going to be controlling the hydraulics on this trailer. In particular I'm going to show you how to set up a cheap wireless remote using this Pilot PLSW29 remote. It's a four channel remote and it works for any 12 volt systems. So what's included in this system is the remote and the control box which is mounted in this PJ quick tilt hydraulic trailer. It's 20 foot long. 10,000 pounds. On this trailer, I control two functions, one being the winch and two being the hydraulic function of the tilt. Now, as you can see, there's four buttons on this remote. It is going to be the hydraulic tilt up and down and the winch control in and out. You might ask yourself, why wouldn't I just buy the PJ hydraulic control remote and then the winch remote control? That's because it has two remotes and I only want one. Plus this is a lot smaller and an easier to use interface. I keep it on the keychain for all of the locks on my trailer. Now in this particular trailer I'm using one as the winch in, two as the winch out, three as the hydraulic tilt up, and four as the hydraulic tilt back down. I've had this system on my trailer for about a year now. I'd recommend it to anybody. It was cheap, it was easy to hook up. I can control both functions of the trailer and you really can't go wrong. The only con that I really see about it is they only give you one remote. Now out of the box, the pilot control comes with it, what's called a push on and then push off. So the relays, once activated, will stay activated until you press the button again. Now for these two functions on this particular trailer, that's not what you want. You take apart the box, and there's little pins that you switch over, which turn it into momentary. So once you press the button, It'll stay on as long as you hold the button. All right, so here's a simple diagram of the pilot box that you're going to receive. It has four outputs. Uh, if I remember correctly, because I installed this a year ago, you're going to have green, a blue, a tan, and maybe a gray. But either way, there's going to be eight wires coming out, two for each channel. So the four channels, eight wires. All right, so I'm going to explain how we're going to hook up the four different channels to the two different functions, one being the winch and one being the hydraulic tilt cylinder. So over here, we have your winch. We'll just call this the control box. And for each winch, it's a tad different. So you have to figure out for your winch what works and what doesn't. But for my winch... It is pretty simple. There's going to be a power wire when you tap into the solenoid box. There's going to be a power wire coming out, and that's going to be a 12 volt source coming out. And then, with one's going to be a down, or, a, or sorry, not a down, a in, a like winch in, and then there's going to be a winch out wire. Now, what I did was I connected this power to both of the inputs. Then I connected whatever channel that you want to control, whether that be the out or the in on one, and then the out or the in Let's cross these to that. Now what you're going to do is, or what's that going to accomplish is, as power comes in the red or your power wire that has 12 volts, when you trip that relay, whether it's for the channel 1 or channel 2, it's going to tell that winch to either power in or power out. It's a pretty simple setup. I have the Badlands winch. It was easy. It was three connections. Uh, there's lots of write-ups online that you can find. Maybe I'll do a video for it if I decide to take my solenoid box apart for you guys. Now, here comes the more difficult part, which is your hydraulic unit. So your hydraulic unit consists of two major components. You have the motor of the hydraulic unit, and then you're going to have your solenoids. Now, my particular hydraulic unit had two solenoids on it. 
Now, again, what I did was I tapped into the power side of the relay for the pump to supply to both channels. So that way, these channels both have power to them at all times. Now, what I did was for the one channel, which we will designate this is the up. For this channel, you're going to want to connect to the solenoid, which is already grounded, but you'll connect a power wire to that through the box, which will pout, which will trip the solenoid to control your unit to go up. And you're going to do the same thing with the unit going down. Now here comes the tricky part when you when I hooked it up originally in my head this worked perfect. As soon as I hit the button all I heard was the relay click and I said oh crap. I realized was I needed to be able to power the motor on. So I needed to let's find a ground. I needed to somehow tell this motor to turn on when these were on and you can't just connect the motor to these by doing this because when either up or down it will back feed and it will open up both solenoids. What you have to use is you have to use a one way diode pretty much. So what I made is I made it like a, a Y harness from each power because it's getting power and it's powering that. So I made to each solenoid, I teed off with a connection and put it in. And in each one of these, I put a diode, a one-way diode. You can pick them up. I think I used uh, like a one-watt diode. It's not a whole lot to trip a solenoids. It's only about an amp. So a one-amp diode is okay. And you want to connect them so that way it won't back feed. And then you want to connect that to the positive side of your pump of your of your switch so that way it will trip your motor to turn on every time you press each of the functions. It looks a little messy. Once you connect it all to your trailer, it's actually not that bad, which I'll show you right now. So on this particular PJ model, like I said, I connected what is the power wire, which is going to feed, as you can see, there's three wires that run over. The power wire to power the relays, or not really to power the relays, it's actually to um, supply power to the, ops, to, the, to the one pole of the relay, and then the two other wires are for each channel that get the 12 volt coming back. Now, when I use these clips that are uh, double-sided so that way that these get connected uh, I use them so they're double-sided um, so that way I could tap without actually having to like really mess with I wanted to leave the PJ trailer as much intact as possible so that way when I went to sell it I could just remove the unit and it would have a fully intact no cut wiring because these trailers are all sealed wiring so this wire comes over, controls obviously each unit, so you can see this green green wires for whatever solenoid that is, I don't know at this time because it's almost a year old, and then the tan one goes to the other side. Now, if you look, this is turned on, if you look, there's a tiny little diode right there that comes from each side and what they do this little diode right here and that little diode down there and they connect to the positive side of the solenoids so that way when these solenoids get powered 12 volt power from the pilot control it also turns this motor on and it's pretty simple pretty easy to hook up I definitely recommend it to any 
tilt trailers, dump trailers, hydraulic gooseneck 